Gene Simmons said rock is dead, with so many bands, including his, relying on lip syncing and audio embellishments. He may just have a point. That great philosopher Groucho Marx said the secret of life is honesty and fair dealing. And if you can fake that, you've got it made. And in this video, I want to talk about certain trends that seem to have emerged recently uh, when it comes to live performances. Some might say they're just embellishments. Some might say it's just downright cheating. Frank Zappa famously said that jazz isn't dead. It just smells funny. Well, rock isn't dead, but certainly in terms of live music, there's a bit of a stench to it these days. These days, we're expected to pay more and more for a kind of enactment which visually may well be impressive, but I think it certainly detracts from the, the true spirit of what a rock and roll show should be. So I repeat, rock isn't dead as such, but it's certainly looking a bit peaky, I think. Uh, maybe almost ready for its coffin, or kiss coffin. And this has all risen to the fore, because Doc McGee has uh, finally spoken about the certain live um, assistance. Now Doc McGee has uh, come out in defence of Stanley saying that uh, he sings every track so he sings it. It's not lip syncing, it's enhanced. Uh, it's just part of the process to make sure that everybody hears the songs the way they should be sang to begin with. First of all I take issue with the the word enhanced. Uh, that strikes me as a bit, of a bit of a thorny one to begin with and secondly I don't want to hear a reproduction of the studio album or the studio version of the track. I'm, I'm quite interested or open to hearing a kind of an interpretation or uh, uh, simplifying it in a way if it cannot be faithfully produced live. Blackie Lawless from Wasp has also entered the phrase saying he's using studio tracks to make the sound so the, the track doesn't sound so emaciated when they perform it live. He insists that he sings everything though it's, uh, it's just uh, in terms of extra guitars and things like that. I think that pads out the sound. Again, uh, um, to me, if a track doesn't work live uh, because it sounds emaciated, then don't perform it. Devise a set list that uh, works. Now, in terms of Kiss, there's no doubt that Stanley's voice is ailing with age. He says, if you want to hear me sound like I did on a live, go and listen to Kiss Alive. However, I think uh, when they perform live, they could lean on Simmons a little bit more. I mean, Simmons has uh, sung some great songs in the Kiss catalogue, songs that have never been performed live, like Killer, for example, one of my favourite numbers. Uh, or Larger Than Life, another great one, which I think was performed on Kiss Cruise recently, but one that rarely is dusted off. There are options. I mean, if Stanley is struggling to sing Love Gun and I Was Made For Loving You, don't sing Love Gun and I Was Made For Loving You. Interestingly, Fozzie, a frontman, Chris Jericho, defended Stanley's vocal performance, saying that the star child has nothing to prove to anybody. It's not about having anything to prove, it's about being honest. And let's talk about certain embellishments uh, live, of course. Bands have always used tapes and things like that to a certain degree. I mean, uh, the ka cash registers and ticking clocks, for example. I mean, none of us expect there to be uh, some hapless roadie backstage winding up endless numbers of alarm clocks. We expect these uh, tape embellishments of the songs. It's when the music, uh, when these embellishments start to work as a bit of a crutch or a sticking plaster for something that just isn't quite right anymore. That's when it becomes problematic for me. And I don't mean to be so down on Kiss. I mean, so many live bands now are, are doing this. But it was Gene Simmons in the press that excoriated other bands for doing just that, uh, using certain studio recording embellishments to bolster the live sound. He, in fact, called uh, such things dishonesty. Certainly, if you're not going to admit to using these things from the get-go. Um, there's nobody with a synthesizer on our stage, there's no samples on the drums, there's nothing, he said. Very few bands who do that now, ACDC, Metallica, Us. I can't even say that about U2 or the Rolling Stones. There are very few bands who don't use backing tracks. Interesting point, I saw the Stones um, a few years ago and I was watching Keith Richards and I thought, Whatever's come, whatever is being played is not being played by him. I'm just wondering, I don't know for sure whether or not they're playing to a lot of pre-recorded stuff these days. Who knows? And I know the thumbnail of this video is live music is dead. Well, it's a bit sensationalist, a bit clickbaitery perhaps. Nevertheless, um, for me, 
enlarge. I think those big concerts, those ones you have to, you're expected to remortgage your house or sell a kidney in order to get a ticket to go and see these days, and then wonder whether or not what you're actually experiencing is live music. That's if you can actually see the stage. I mean, if you're going to one of those high Park concerts, you've probably got a cheaper ticket. You've probably stood in a field in Shropshire somewhere. But even if you have sold all your internal organs, even that of your children, and you're stood in that front section waiting for the band to emerge, and then you uh, just have to try and crane your neck to look over the sea of iPhones that shoot up in the air the minute they hit the stage. Live music sucks for me these days. And these big concerts, as much as I'd love to see Billy Joel, as much as I'd love to see Springsteen, um, I, I just don't think they're worth it anymore, quite frankly. Smaller bands, of course. I mean, I'm sure they are all 100% playing live. What you hear is what you get. I don't believe there's any trickery going on there. But some of these bigger concerts where the emphasis is trying to reproduce the studio material faithfully, uh, I think that's where that's what's becoming problematic. And I don't even mind the use of additional musicians. Of course, some of this music needs, in order to be reproduced better live, needs an additional guitar player or something else. For example, the Stones uh, have a you know a few jobbing musicians, touring musicians who would always uh, go out on the road with them, a brass section, keyboards, and things like that. I don't really mind that at all. Or even Pink Floyd using Snowy White or additional guitarists to. Uh, help reproduce the often layered guitar parts uh, that were performed in the studio. But it's where musicians are hidden away, so as we hopefully don't notice, or they're, uh, or even worse, parts are recorded and they play back to them. That's when I, I start uh, wondering whether or not it becomes a little bit deceitful. So in a nutshell, you could argue that there's always been a certain amount of embellishment live, my feeling is is that the, the spirit of a live performance is simply that. It's the interpretation of the studio material in a live forum. I don't want to hear the album reproduced faithfully. I want to hear the band think, well, this doesn't work, so we'll have to do it this way. That's what's interesting, and that's what's rock and roll as far as I'm concerned. But then I suppose if you're going to charge thousands for a ticket and sell those tickets via Ticket Bastard, you're going to have to deliver, aren't you? So I don't think live music is dead per se, but I do think these big venues, often these big concerts are, are pretty shit these days. And uh, of course, um, the other elephant in the room is you've got a lot of bands performing that really should have stopped performing a few years ago. Anyway, they're my thoughts on the matter. I'd love you to weigh in on this. If you haven't done so already, I urge you to click like, subscribe, and do check that notification bell. And check some of the links below this video for ways you can support the sterling work and hear a classic album review. It's always much appreciated. So I'll just end with my closing salvo, which is hope you're well, staying safe, but more importantly that you keep listening.